Hi, it's Terry Denner of the MathWorks. This is a introductory demo to Simulink, and I love doing this with the Math Spring Damper. And so, of course, it all begins with F equals MA, and in the case of a Math Spring Damper, well, F will be your applied force, it will be the spring force, and it will be the damping force. And so we see that gets kind of elaborated on the left-hand side. And what we also see is that we have a second-order differential equation with a dx dt term as well as an x term, and then we have a forcing function, the applied force. All right, so let's kind of get out of this, and let's get into MATLAB, all right, and specifically, let's get into Simulink. All right, and that this is probably going to be a two video series, perhaps a third one, but but the, the main point is to really kind of establish dynamic systems are described by differential equations, and Simulink is superb at describe, uh, I'd say, representing differential equations and providing solutions, and uh, then when you do controls, it's really good to know about such things. All right, so anyways, let's begin by bringing in our constant. Our constant in this case is going to be 9.8, and my intent is for that to be the gravitational constant. So I'll just call it GC. All right. And let's make this a little bit bigger. Move it there. And uh, now I'm going to integrate it. All right. So here's where we're solving differential equations. And it's a second order, right? 9.8 we know is an acceleration. To get to position, we would integrate it twice. Let's get a scope in there. And we will hit run. Now our convention typically is down is down, you know, and and therefore we don't really view it as 9.8, but we really think of it as minus 9.8. Get that corrected. Okay, so that all works pretty good. All right. Now, the, the next thing I want to do, though, is I want to get to F. F is equal to MA. You know, and if we think of gravity as, you know, I think it's reasonable to think of it as an acceleration. Well, let's multiply it by M times M. Okay, and the block will glow in pink because it doesn't know what that is. And so uh, in this demo, I'm going to just kind of keep kind of a, a live script file for defining my data. And so I'll come in here and I'll just say m is equal to 2. I'll hit enter. Actually, I'll hit the run button. I'll see that that inserts it into my MATLAB workspace. And now the simulate model's got access to it. So if I hit control D, uh, we lose pink glow because it now knows what M is. Right? And so this isn't exactly right though, right? That that's a force. So let's let's even call it we'll call it force underscore GC. Alright. And that this is a integration of what should be acceleration to velocity and then from velocity to position. Right. And so this will seem a little bit like unnecessary, but what we're really doing is kind of putting in some formality to doing mechanics equations. All right, and I'm going to, at the same time, I'm going to introduce the gain block. And so the gain block will take what's coming in here, and it'll multiply by whatever I choose to. I'm going to make it 1 over n. Right? And so we're going to end up with back at minus 9.8, and instead going wherever we went to before there. I guess I didn't hit run. Okay, so uh, anyways, we're kind of giving the same result, and we seem like we have a you know an unnecessary multiplication and division by m. But I think kind of the methodology is the key to what we want to do here. Now, right here, again, you know, what is this? We got f divided by m. Well, that's a. A getting integrated by an integrator. Well, that'll be v, and v getting integrated by and integrated that'll be P. Right? And if we have initial conditions like a V0, let's go ahead and put a V0 in right there. And an X0, we'll put that in here too. So these are simply initial conditions. Well, we're going for good methodology. Let's go ahead and include that here too. So put in V0 is equal to 0. 
and x0 is equal to 0 as well. 0 is a number. Might as well be clear about that. Control D, and I think we're good. And so this, though, you know, it's so fundamental. You know, I want to kind of keep it, and I want to put it in my pocket. I want to have it ready whenever I need to kind of do mechanical dynamics. So we'll put this into a subsystem, and we'll simply call it F equals MA. All right, and I'm going here. I'm okay with it calling that P, but this should be called F. Okay. And also by putting in a box, you know, becoming efficient, I'm saving room, right? And so, uh, anyways, now we can get into that mass spring damper, right? And the, the main thing about the, let's see if I can bring that up. Is that Kx. And I'm going to be even a little bit more formal than I'm here. And it's really k times x minus x0, and x0 being what we call the, our natural line. Ooh, that's, I'll call it, I'll call it uh, L0. We're using x0 for initial con condition on position. All right, so any, anyways, let's kind of get into this now. All right, and so it means we're going to take this position, and I am going to set up x minus x0. I'll bring in an add block right here. I think I'll put this into the first port. And again, I'm not going to call it x0 because we're using that already. And so this will be a minus. And let's get a constant. And we'll call it uh, L0 for natural light. And L0, I'll make that equal to 0 as well. Again, 0 is a number. Control D, and we're pretty close to having a spring force calculated, and so our next thing to do will be bring in a gain for a multiplication with the parameter that we'll call k. And so put in k right there. Click on OK. And add two our forces. You know, this is kind of why we want to get it as m times g, because it's forces that can add, accelerations don't add. Right. And so let's get another add block. We're almost there, and k is pink, so let's just put in the value for k equal 100. And I'll hit the run button. Again, all my data, because I've run this function, is now in my workspace. So that's why it's got access to it. And I hit Control D, and let's go ahead and run this. Did I get that right? So it's, yep, it's position minus natural light. Okay. And that's what you call super unstable as x going to like 10 to the 29th, right? And so, you know, uh, I'll just say that when you do kind of forget signs and stuff like that, it's always an easy fix. Who cares if the computer calculates a number to 10 to the 29th? And so we just know that that's the problem. We go in, we fix it, and so we get the sign correct now. And it, if you really think about it, this should make sense. You know, the job of the spring is to go against the, the direction of motion. Therefore, it should be kind of opposite. The bigger x gets, you know, the bigger the stretch, the more the force should be opposing its movement in that direction. So, so anyways, we're doing pretty good on this. Now, part of this video is to just kind of introduce you to Simulink. Uh, Simulink is designed to be incredibly efficient, and therefore, it will make as few calculations as possible. And therefore, you get these kind of weird cutoffs. I'll tell you, every one of those kind of 
what do you want to call them, kink points, wherever they are, those are accurate, but we want to see something that looks a little bit more smooth too, and so I'm going to just tell it. Put in a calculation every 0 0.01 seconds. Yeah, and you're already beginning to see a little bit of where we're going with this. We have variable time step methods, and you see all kinds of stuff. Uh, you know, methodologies for, for doing the numerical updates. So let's go with OK. We'll keep that automatic solver. And we should get a nice smooth plot this time, which we did. All right. And so uh, we're almost done with this video. The way I want to kind of wrap it up is I want to put a little bit of damping. I don't like that it just kind of goes on like a perpetual motion machine. And so, um, and so damping is really about velocity, right? And so the faster it's moving, think of the more kind of viscous actions that are going to be, I'd say, excited to essentially slow down the system. Again, viscosity and, and, and damping will always impose uh, motion as well, right? And so we know V, we just haven't really brought it out. And so I'm going to just kind of fix this and really prepare us for where we'll go in the next video. Right. And so we call that PVA, and so what I'm really going to do is collect, you know, the calculation of position, velocity, and acceleration. You know, at the third port right there, and I like the order of P first, then V, then then A. And so just take V right there. Okay. Now this is going to make things cleaner for me, but in the, you know, I'll, I'll kind of get at it. So we're going to throw this into a subsystem too, and so I'll just go like this, and I'll call it spring, and we'll fix it up in a second. I'll call it spring damper. All right, but this is a signal now with three numbers on it, and so the first thing I'll do is. Actually, let's go ahead and, and work with the spring damper. So I'm going to go in here. Right? Okay, this is PVA. Actually, I'm going to call it some. Yeah, I'm going to call it PVA. We'll get to something called feedback in the next video. Right? And so you get a DMUX. So mux, muxing is how we took three numbers and put them together. Right. And DMUX is how we're going to take the three together and, and break them out again. We're going to unpack it with this. Right. And I put that in right there. This will be my force. And carrying a little bit more baggage, but the ability to kind of go somewhere with this will be important. We're almost back to where we were before. And so the last piece to, well, this would run, I believe. So let's go ahead and try running. Again, it's a signal loaded with you know, the three quantities, position, velocity, and acceleration. And so I like this block. It's called the selector block. You know, its default configuration is it would report the first and the third. And I only want it to give me the position, and so I'll just type in a one instead of the the one, three in brackets, and I'll pop that in right there. Hit the space bar, and okay, so we're looking good there. Right? And so now what I want to do is put the damping in. And so by bringing in PVA, I do now have access to V. Take this down here. Let's just do this. And I'll introduce our damping coefficient. And again, the convention is well, it's minus, and B will be a positive number. And so I'll put that in. And we will kind of add up these two. And I'll change this back into a plus plus. Okay. 
And then I'll go to my data here and let's give myself a value for B. For B. And B will be equal to 10. Control D. And there you go. And so that damps out very nicely. So anyways, that's, that's the introductory demo. Um, the next video I'm going to um, show some relevance of what we just did. And I, I'd say that pretty much the entirety, I'd say, of control theory has already been inserted into this model pretty, pretty uh, I, I'll just say in a very well-represented way. So anyways, the next video, um, probably about 10 to 15 minutes to, uh, we'll get into use of this for control, designing a controller. All right, thank you.